What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing my match review, match reaction and match analysis of Manchester City's comprehensive 5-1 victory at home in the Premier League against Luton Town. Before I do crack on with this video, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe to my channel, it is free to subscribe. Social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up, 100 likes is the aim. And do go and check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. They're going to keep you up to date with all the latest football scores from around the grounds, from around England, including the Premier League, around Europe, uh, around the world as well, and all the other sports that you guys uh, love to go and follow too. It's all on SofaScore, all in one place. All in one app that's very highly rated. It's top quality. Do go and check it out. It's free to download. The link is in the description. Alternatively, you can use the QR code on screen, which will take you to the download page to download the free SofaScore app. And I want to say a big thank you to SofaScore for sponsoring this video. Remember, anyone that does download SofaScore using my link does help to support the future content created here on my channel. So, on to this game. City dominated possession. 37 shots. 13 on target. Five goals, improved our goal difference, we picked up a big three points, right now we're top of the Premier League, we're in a good place. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Now, uh, obviously, uh, I imagine that by the end of today, Manchester City aren't going to be top of the Premier League. Uh, Liverpool going up first at home against Crystal Palace. Arsenal at home later on against Aston Villa. My expectation is they both win that game and City go back into third place. What was important for this game, though, with Luton Town having injuries, they didn't have a recognised centre-back, was Man City improving their goal difference. Now, I think my only nitpick from this game, other than City having 37 shots, which was 13 on target and coming away with just five goals, just five goals, guys, uh, is City could have been more clinical and it could have been even more than what City were looking for. And it did take Luton Town to score a goal for Manchester City to actually up their game once more to go and grab a couple of goals late on to win by four. So Manchester City improving the goal difference right now. Our goal difference is better than Liverpool's by two. So if Liverpool only pick up a narrow victory, they go back over us, but we could have a better goal difference than us. And that could be quite crucial come the end of the season. We don't know if it's still going to come down to goal difference or not. There's still six games for City to play and seven for Arsenal and Liverpool to go. Still plenty of games, plenty of points to be played for, plenty of points to be lost as well. Premier League's not done and dusted just yet. And Manchester City showcasing a game sandwich between two very difficult high-energy games against Real Madrid. This game was very much about us just winning this game. And I'd have been satisfied if we'd just uh, coasted this game out from the second minute when we went ahead and won this game 1-0. It was just about that. Players getting a rest. City getting three points. Job done for City and more. So I'm very happy right now uh, with City's performance and the result that we managed to get uh, for against Luton Town. And for Luton Town, uh, it, it's difficult. The goal difference now is a, a lot worse than the likes of uh, Crystal Palace, Everton and Nottingham Forest who are down there. Uh, no real damage done for Luton though. They are only a point behind Nottingham Forest and a couple of points behind Everton. Everton do have a couple uh, of game in hands on all the teams around them. As to Crystal Palace, they're playing one of them against Liverpool as well. So imagine the teams at the bottom will be hoping that Liverpool do uh, them a favour. Uh, and end up dragging them into that little race as well and there's still plenty of points to be played for for Luton as well uh, so it's not all done and dusted it would have been a, a massive bonus for them to get anything at Manchester City but when it comes to Luton's survival uh, their survival isn't going to be decided upon games against City against Arsenal against Liverpool it's results against the teams around you ultimately they decide if you're going to remain a Premier League club or not when you're fighting for your life down at the bottom I've been following City for over 20 years uh, during my first uh, the first few years of me following Manchester City, uh, it was all about when, because I remember City getting promoted from the old first division into the Premier League, it was always just about hitting the 40 point barrier and staying in the, uh, in the Premier League uh, and, and sometimes it could be quite difficult and it ultimately just ends up being two or three of them games in the business end of the season where you pick up the big wins takes you from your 19th and your 18th into your your 14th and your 15th and that ultimately is the difference uh, and you, you suspect that your Brentford's Palace Everton's Forest and Luton uh, maybe two or three of them will end up picking up them two or three wins that are needed and it'll end up being a little bit of a dot 
dogfight between, between Nottingham Forest and Luton Town, as long as there is no points deduction for uh, Nottingham Forest on top of what they've already had, and for Everton as well. We'll have to wait and see, but very interesting down at the bottom, and with City winning, keeping a three-horse race at the top of the Premier League as well, making things very interesting. Now, in terms of this game itself and the lineup, it was important that City managed to get a full rest for some key players, players like... Rodri, who'd asked for a rest, and um, for the first time since 2022, Man City have gone and won a Premier League game without Rodrigo, which is an outstanding success. Uh, and so that in itself is good. I imagine that City will probably take another game at some point between now and the end of the season. You probably think it could come next weekend in the FA Cup against Chelsea, where they may take another option, in particular if City end up knocking out Real Madrid and they know they've got big uh, Premier League and uh, semi-final Champions League games and a potential FA Cup final coming up as well. City will say, do you know what? We're not going to get much of an opportunity here to rest Rodri, so we're going to take the opportunity here for Rodri to play just one game in a couple of weeks, and that would be his rest for the season. That would be good to go for the remainder of the season. But uh, at the moment, my only real concern that I've got when it comes to rotation is the defenders, in particular Ruben Diaz, Akanji and Gavardiel. They've not really had a rest, and we could do with Kyle Walker and Nathan Ake coming back sooner rather than later. Uh, and I was delighted when looking at the bench to see both Kyle Walker's name and Nathan Ake's name in there as well. Now, the question is, uh, neither of them got any minutes here, are they going to get any minutes against Real Madrid? I think it would be a big, big ask to ask either of them to come into the team to get up to scratch very quickly to start that game. And I think it was up to me. I'd assess the situation and from a defensive point of view, if I feel like we need Kyle Walker or Nathan Ake going into the second half, I'd bring them on and I'd give them a few minutes in the second half rather than start them because I, I just think that you want a team that's already gelling together, uh, in particular at the back. You want to look as solid as possible at the back uh, and I'd be going with Diaz, Akanji and Gavardiel uh, as my defenders for that game. Uh, good to see Rico Lewis starting. Mateus Nunes, I thought, had a good game other than that mistake that led to the Luton goal as well. Kovacic grabbing a goal. Gavardiel grabbing a, grabbing a goal. Jeremy Doku grabbing a goal as well. Erling Haaland scoring from the penalty spot. It was just all round, just a, a good, solid performance from Manchester City. A well-managed game. Uh, obviously going 1-0 up after two minutes, getting that through to half-time. It'd be nice to have doubled the lead. It'd be nice to have killed the game up before half-time that you could start to rotate some of the first team players that did start in that game uh, in particular City looking towards Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne who did end up coming off for City uh, in the end but uh, both of the players doing 81 minutes both will be wanting to start against Real Madrid so uh, it's good to see Kevin De Bruyne over his illness and good to go it was just a, I think a little bit of food poisoning from some food that he ate uh, in the hotel in Madrid and City were a bit fearful that the whole squad were going to come down with an illness but it was just an isolated incident and De Bruyne very much over that and in contention to be starting against Real Madrid as well. And there are some selection headaches, actually, for Pep Guardiola now. Do you want a bit of pace out wide? Do you want to go with Jeremy Doku? Because Jeremy Doku, I thought, had a very good game for Manchester City here today, uh, which was always what we were looking for. Uh, do you want to go with uh, Mateo Kovacic starting in midfield? Because there's a lot of rotation. Obviously, your Bernardo Silvers, uh, your Phil Foden's, your Jack Grealish's. These are the players that have been rested. So, a little bit of a selection headache there. A good one uh, for Pep Guardiola. But uh, all in all, just three points for Manchester City. Uh, plus four on our goal difference. Hand it over to Arsenal and to Liverpool and we'll see if either of them can drop points. My expectation is they're at home, they're not going to drop points today, uh, so don't get your hopes up. And uh, yeah, we'll push on for the remainder of the game, six big Premier League games coming up and City not in Premier League action now for a couple more weeks. So there's nothing that we can do about it, all we can do is win our games and hope. And that's what we uh, have got to do. It only takes Arsenal and Liverpool, both of them, to slip up just once this season. If we win every game between now and the end of the season and they both slip up once, then City do become Premier League champions for a fourth consecutive year. And at the moment, well in contention. So uh, we can push that now to the back burner. We can start thinking about the Champions League, start thinking about the FA Cup as well against Chelsea. Uh, but I imagine City's focus now will be Champions League, Real Madrid. It's a match worthy of the final. It's a classic in midweek. It's going to be another classic uh, in Manchester at the Etihad Stadium as well I'm really looking forward to that game should be a really good high quality game of football and hopefully we can be on the right end uh, of a result against Real Madrid like we were last season and on my final note it was good to see Edison returning back in goal so again another little selection headache do you go with Ortega 
do you go with Edison? With Edison starting, showing that he is now uh, fully match fit, I imagine City will go with Edison for the second leg. But again, we'll have to wait and see. thought Rico Lewis had a good game for Manchester City as well. All in all, very happy with it. As I said, goals today for an own goal from Ashioka for Luton after two minutes. Kovacic made it 2-0 after 64 minutes. A Haaland penalty on 76 minutes sealed the deal in the three points for City. Uh, Ross Barkley, I said he was the danger man to look out for for Luton, grabbing a goal back, which they thought may get them back into the game. Turned out as a consolation. Jeremy Doku who killed the game back off in the 87th minute, grabbing a goal, and then a well-taken Yoshko Gavardial goal. Two goals in two games. Can he make it three out of three? That would be absolutely brilliant against Real Madrid. Madrid as well uh, and Yoshko Gavardio once more showing his high quality and why City chose to invest so much money in the summer for very much just a, a player that's uh, overall right now is young but very good and he's going to get even better and it, I, th I think it's frightening how good Yoshko Gavardio could end up being for Manchester City I can see if he sticks and stays at City in the next two or three seasons and him uh, obviously staying injury free hopefully fingers crossed he will I can see Yoshko Gavardio uh, being a little bit of a revolutionary player when it comes to uh, defending uh, and the arts of uh, going forward and adapting and being versatile and I think if Pep Guardiola sticks with City for that long as well it could be very much uh, a very happy match there for all parties involved. Yoshko Gavardio, to me, he's starting to excel. He's starting to see the very best out of him. And once more shown on display here against Luton. Anyway, three points plus four on the goal difference. Very happy with that. We can start thinking once more about Real Madrid. A do or die battle in Manchester. All to play for. I say bring it on. So there we go, they would be my thoughts. Do let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you are new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 100 likes is the aim. Social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorship for any videos or any general business inquiries. Also, don't forget to go and check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. very much to sofa score for sponsoring this video do go check them out links and details there in the description will keep you up to date with all the latest scores all the latest match statistics and all the match information for you guys to enjoy as i said it's not just premier league games and manchester city games that are involved all games throughout football everywhere around the world is all on there as well as all the other sports that you guys love to go and follow all in one place all in one app it's free go and check it out links and details they are in the description remember uh, anyone that does download the free sofa score app using my link does help to support the future content created here on my channel and i'll see you all again tomorrow as i've got my champions league predictions and then on tuesday got my preview for the real madrid game for you guys to look forward to so i'll see you for that so i've been jsgc thank you everyone for watching i hope everyone is safe and well peace ciao for now <laughs>